the middle of the night because of that and also because of the shape of this house I'm trying to be quiet but hopefully hopefully you can hear me uh, I can't sleep shocker I know I have a freshly filled extra long hot water bottle because it's very cold and I just made myself some tea and I'm going to do a little bit of reading I'm gonna do a little bit of a reading vlog I wanted some color I want some color in my book covers. So this one I've been waiting to read for ages. It's The Hollow Tree by James Brogdon. It's quite long. Uh, it's almost 500 pages I think. And so I'm only going to do two books for this reading vlog. Um, I also picked The Loop which is... I got it in a book box. It's by Jeremy Robert Johnson. I think it's about some sort of recurring uh, noise that sort of takes over this town and drives them all crazy. I'm gonna see how that goes. I have some, I was gonna say Starbucks, what's it called? Ikea, gingerbread biscuits, all these things. This one is sort of loosely based on or takes inspiration from a true story of a body that of a woman that was found in a witch elm tree. Uh, this one deals with an oak. But the premise is fascinating because it's about a woman who loses her hand and through phantom limb syndrome, which is where even though someone had lost a limb, they can still feel it. They can still feel pain and itches and sensations on it, which I can't imagine how strange that must be. But she starts to feel... Um, sensations of being in the woods. She starts to feel someone holding her hand from another plane and um, I've only read like two two little short chapters so far but I am um, hooked and it's fascinating so I'm gonna see how much more of this I can get before the sun comes up I guess. I don't know. Okay, it is, um, it's half eight in the morning, uh, on the 11th of December, which is the day that Served Cold comes out, and it has come out, I just received it on my Kindle, uh, well I received it a couple of hours ago, um, but it's very bizarre, because, try not to get Christmas lights. That's my name. My name is in there, along with some other cool people. So I'm officially a published writer. I was gonna say the six-year-old me would be very excited right now, but six-year-old me would be rolling her eyes and saying, "Duh, why did it take you so long?" Um, but that's very cool. It's very strange. Uh, I have read the first story by, uh, it's by Cameron Cheney and it is very good. It's very creepy. It's got some twists and turns in it. I like his stuff. I know um, other people have read his book, Autumn Crow. I haven't read it yet, but um, I definitely like that story. So there's more to come. So I'm gonna change of plan. I'm going to read that today. I got to like I'm like 100 pages into the hollow tree. It hasn't really ramped up yet to the creepy stuff. Um, still sort of getting to know the main character but it's good and I'm gonna enjoy the rest of it. But I think for today I'm gonna read Surf Cold and probably do a video on it later. So I'm gonna get into bed and read a few more stories and probably fall asleep and get back up when it's night time again because yeah it is my nose is very red um it is monday morning and uh i just got back from meeting with my uh counselor outside i got to pet a dog it was great i read the full served cold it's great it is fantastic i would recommend reading it underneath about 
three blankets with a mug of hot something beside you because uh, I think everyone understood the assignment of having some sort of coldness in it. Um, there's so much snow, so much water. There are some really great stories in there uh, and I don't think any of them were a miss for me. I think they all had something great in it. Um, I'm not talking about my own, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna I have to go to work for a few hours and then I'm gonna come home and film a video talking about uh, a, just a couple of stories, a handful of stories in it. Um, so I'll be making that video later. I have gotten about halfway through The Hollow Tree by James Brogdon. Um, I love, I freaking love trees. I, that sounds so lame, but I do. There are so many trees near where I live that look like this, like these gnarly, twisted trees, and I love them. So far, um, the story is just kind of ramping up. I really like what he's doing with it. I'm not getting a lot from the main character yet, but the sort of oddity of the plot um, and the story are carrying it through, um, but I'm hoping I kind of get a bit more about her and her background and stuff. I've got a little bit of her background, but um, a bit more as we go along. Uh, I like what they're doing um, with the story, so there is quite a lot in this that is very similar to the actual story of the the body that was found in the tree, Bella in the Witch Elm, and they're, he's really playing off that and he's decided to sort of mix together the three cons conspiracy theories, the three sort of theories about what actually happened to Bella in the Witch Elm, even though I think they kind of pretty much figured out what the actual truth was, but I like what he's doing so far, um, sort of melding the three sort of possibilities together and I like it because it's about a spooky tree. It's very good. Halfway through that, I'll probably finish that today, I also started this one, Loop. Oh, also I was looking at the, I was staring at the front and I realised that it's very similar to a tattoo that I got uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, so that's very cool. Again, trees, roots. It's, I think it's definitely YA which normally isn't my taste, but so far it's good. I'm like, it starts off with a sort of transcript from a podcast uh, about conspiracy theories and talking about this strange murder-suicide that definitely isn't a murder-suicide and there's something odd going on there. Um, and then it goes into a classroom uh, to two kids. But in this classroom, a person in the class starts acting strange, starts acting violently, saying strange things, and then it just sort of jumps forward to that having been an incident, um, a very violent incident, and uh, are two people trying to carry on with their lives and having to see counsellors and just trying to somehow process what they witnessed in that classroom. I'm assuming it has to do with this, the idea of the loop. There's a, a big tech company and there's a lot of big tech companies that have bought up land and started up offices and stuff around this small town, which is never good. Uh, Zuckerberg might show up, you never know. But so far, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. I'm liking it so far. I'm not seeing anything crazy about it, but I'm only about 30 or so pages in. Um, but it's quite short. I'll, I'll definitely have this finished by the end of the week as well. So I will continue to read those. I have to take an antigen test, test go to work, and um, see. I'll probably do some reading at work because it's quite slow at the minute. Although I do want to get some writing done as well. So um, I shall see about that. So first I want to talk about Loop. Uh, I am two thirds of the way through. There's parts one, one part three now. 
it's good. One thing I've noticed when I review books, I never mention the characters' names. Don't know why I do that. Confuses everybody. I'm sure people reading as well or watching videos as well. But the main character in this is a girl called Lucy. She is originally from Peru, but she grew up uh, with two very alcoholic parents, had a very traumatic childhood, and her parents actually died in a car accident that she was also in. Uh, and she was adopted by a white couple from Oregon, and that's where she now lives. And she has a good friend at school called Bucket, that's his... Uh, nickname and he's from Pakistan and they both are good friends mainly because they both experience a lot of microaggressions at school, both get bullied at school and there's only actually four students in the entire school who aren't white. Um, so obviously they have a, a lot in common at this school and her and Bucket are in class one day when one of the students goes a little crazy and he starts saying strange things. They can see something on the back of his neck but don't know what it is and it's like he's talking about someone and talking to someone who isn't there and he attacks one of the other students and actually rips his eyeball clean out of his head. Holy God what a Wednesday uh, and he also kills their teacher and very quickly after this, a little too quickly, uh, authorities show up, guys in uniforms show up, and um, there's some repressed memories going on here because we jump into the future a little bit, a few weeks, and Lucy is seeing a counsellor about this. She's trying to figure out what the hell happened. She know, like, they know what happened, but there's there's little bits that she's she can't really remember uh, as if something happened and somebody wants her to forget it, you know. Um, so her and Bucket are still trying to process all of this. It's the end of the school year uh, and they're, they're seniors and they're not going to have the graduation that they normally would have because not only has this happened but uh, there's also been a murder. Another student from their school was murdered in an apparent murder-suicide by his mother, but it, that's all very sketchy. And now, one of the the jocks of the school, one of the well-known athletes, has gone missing. He's just disappeared. Nobody knows where he is. He was acting very strange before he disappeared. So, the town's a little bit crazy at the minute. Um, but... There's a party on and normally Lucy would not be one to go to parties. Bucket's always trying to get girls so he'll be there but she's normally not really into parties but she's feeling a little bit overwhelmed at home. She loves her adopted parents but they're very... she feels a little claustrophobic at the minute. She doesn't really know how to handle them, how to explain what she's going through. Um, so she decides to go to this party. Why not? And the party happens in these caves where a lot of parties seemingly happen. So they have to climb down into these caves in the desert, I think. Seems very dangerous to me. Um, and of course, at these caves, shit hits the fan. Other students start going crazy and start attacking everybody. And at one point, Lucy and Bucket are able to hear the transmission that everyone else is hearing. There's some sort of transmission going on, going around town. Um, it seems to be saying that there's been some sort of a toxic wa waste leak um, and it's sort of controlling everybody's minds but all the other students who are attacking people um, they're talking as if they don't feel good. There's something about them that they don't feel good and someone is telling them that if they kill um, in the most violent ways possible, uh, then they'll feel better. Uh, which is all very strange and it's all connected to this this guy who's missing, this guy called Jason. And that's where we're at at the moment. So I like Lucy, I like there's a little bit of a romance in it, um, which usually wouldn't be my thing, but I it was really well done, it was very like organically done um, and 
at one point the love interest disappears and I literally <laughs> I was going to write a strongly worded letter to Jeremy Robert Johnson about that but it's okay he reappeared um, and you feel a lot of sympathy for for Lucy and for everything she's going through um, she's she's not perfect she's not the perfect uh, hero who does everything right all the time you can't expect her to uh, but uh, I think she's a great character my only issue at the moment is that I look like a ghost dear lord no. uh, my only issue at the minute is that they're in a car chase and the car chase went on for like three or four chapters mainly because the author kept regressing into Lucy's mind and trying to psychoanalyze what everything was happening that was happening was going to do to her in the future like how it was going to traumatize her how it was already traumatizing her and it just seemed redundant um in the middle of this action scene i felt like they really needed to get on with the chase like every time a chapter ended and they were still in this car i was annoyed because I wanted to get to the conclusion of it, you know, the, the car has been dying for quite a while, you know, is it going to die, are they going to crash, is a person going to die, who knows, I like it, it's good, uh, there's a lot of action in it, it's quite gruesome, there's a lot of blood, there's some really um, poignant and uh, interesting and real talk about uh, microaggressions and racism and um, trauma and how teenagers, um, I'd imagine uh, American teenagers as well um, because of all of the terrific and traumatic school shootings, how like a whole generation of kids have to grow up with these horrible memories or or waiting for this horrible thing to happen and it's always just around the corner um, and these traumatic experiences so it's got a lot of layers to it I like it it's very interesting uh, I haven't gotten too far into the hollow tree but that a bit more later it's a good thing that in my story I'm talking about a ghost called the Bon Bon which is the woman in white because it can get any whiter like a sheet I'm gonna finish my makeup and film that little thing for murders. I am back. I filmed uh, my short clip for murders. That's why I'm all like a cold, cold corpse. Um, I also filmed uh, and uploaded a video about the served cold uh, anthology myself. Just a couple of stories I wanted to point out in it. I got almost to the same point in this. They both have three parts to them. Um, that is where the third part is and I'm about 100 pages before that. I'm around about here so I have that much left. On this one in the hollow tree it's getting very interesting so the... I'm talking quietly because I think my husband's going to bed. It's... the main character in this is called Lucy. She is a woman with a husband who, I think I mentioned before, she loses her left hand in an accident and that hand starts to feel uh, things touching it that aren't there. So it's really starting to get into what is happening, what is happening in the story. I'm going to take my makeup off uh, while I talk about this. She initially, she was still feeling things and she thought maybe it was just part of the phantom limb thing then she could feel like bugs and just sort of reflexively she accidentally pulled a bug through from this other place and got chased by a lot of bugs and then she pulled a cat through um, she took like a young nephew or something to this house and they used to uh they used to entomb cats in houses in England for luck or something, I don't know why. 
Um, and there was like this ghost of a cat that she could feel, so she pulled it through and kept it as a pet. Um, same. But unfortunately, it seems like every time she pulls something through, some, there's some sort of repercussion. There's, you know, it's not just a free cat, unfortunately. There's a horrible creature started trying to attack their cat. It seemed to be some sort of weasel badger hybrid, some horrible new creation. They didn't know what to make of it. Her husband had no idea any of this was going on, by the way. Well, then she started having nightmares about three different women. Look, it's interesting because it takes all three of those theories and melds them into one. It melds three women into one soul pretty much so they're all they're all true pretty much accidentally ends up pulling a woman into the new world and is trying to figure out what the repercussions of that are going to be doesn't seem to have any mer memories and she's called Mary um, which is sort of just a name that they gave this folkloric image of this woman um, until she starts to remember one of the lives that she had and I'm assuming that the other lives will be coming back at some point as well uh, but all of these women were killed by uh, horrible men shocker there but um, I think the three men sort of represent their deaths or the not their deaths but like almost a body death as a being so when she pulled Mary through and Mary had these three souls attached into one um, these three men appeared as well and are trying to pull Mary back through Rachel and her phantom hand seem to have some sort of power over them and she's able to fight them off so I don't know how this is all going to end. I can't imagine that Mary can just start a new life in the 21st century as a new person after she's technically died once or three times, I don't know. But I guess I'm going to find out, but it's getting very interesting. Okay, uh, more time has passed. It's irrelevant. I'm just going to film a very short uh, ending to this video because it's been going on for longer than a month. It's now near the end of January. So I read these two books. I did finish them just before Christmas. I think I brought this one up with me to see my family at Christmas. Um, James Brogdon, another fantastic book about creepy things. I, <clears throat> I especially liked that he took the myth at the centre of this and almost made myth itself or the way that we cultures all over the world perpetuate myths and give them their sort of strength and power. He almost made that a character in itself and it made it so much more interesting. I would have been entirely invested if it had just been about uh, Bella and the Witch Elm, you know, this one woman, one woman story. Um, but he managed to bring all three of the sort of myths or legends surrounding it into one and it was fascinating. So I really enjoyed it. And The Loop was uh, a little bit of a surprise for me. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did, but it was a great story about a it was a way that wasn't too heavy on the romance and it didn't have the sort of chosen one trope. It has a, a flawed main character, this poor girl who's just had such a hard run at life and now has to deal with this nonsense implant that's taking over this town and she deals with it as you might expect that she would in an imperfect way and an emotional way. And the ending is bittersweet, but 
it was an enjoyable read apart from what I mentioned before about sort of dwelling too much on internal thoughts and stuff rather than getting through with the action but um, it's good it's it's got a lot of action a lot of blood and violence uh, in it and um, some very good depictions of teenage trauma and the, the bullshit you have to deal with as a teenager so uh, I did enjoy it I did prefer The Hollow Tree but I would still recommend either of these books I think they are definitely worth a read so if you got to the end of this video thank you so much well done <laughs> you deserve a medal I will be back very soon for new 2022 videos some more reading vlogs and reviews and hopefully fun things and hopefully uh, a giveaway or two as well so happy new year hope you had a great Christmas hope if you got sick you didn't get too sick uh, and I'll see you in the next video.